My name is Sunil Amre. I'm a historian at Yale University, and my field of research is South and Southeast Asian history. My work has focused on environmental history and the history of migration, and I've tried to bring those two fields together in new ways. I believe we cannot talk about environmental justice without a reckoning with environmental history. We can see this clearly in the relationship between environmental change and human migration, which is at the forefront of public debate today. For a long time, the relationship between environment and migration was perceived, often by European observers, in a crudely reductionist way. Call to mind the stereotypical picture of migrants, often Asian migrants, being pushed by natural disasters or droughts. The depersonalizing language of push and pull factors is still very much part of our social science vocabulary. Quite rightly, the field of diaspora studies rejected this environmental determinism, emphasizing instead the creativity, agency, and struggle of migrant communities. I've tried to re-examine the relationship between climate, environment, and migration in a more open-ended, more complex way, in a way that puts power and inequality at the heart of our understanding. To do so, I've tried to work with diverse archives that foreground multiple voices, collecting oral histories, reading landscapes as records of work and suffering, turning to song and drama to understand how people have made meaning of changing environments, including those they encountered when they had to leave to make homes elsewhere. My research has led me to reframe the relationship between the climate crisis and migration as fundamentally a crisis of habitability. In terms of the struggle and all too often the inability of communities around the world to maintain and sustain their homes in the richest sense of that word. Seen in this way, we can perceive how heavily the crisis of habitability has origins in the legacies of colonialism, its economic legacies in producing vast inequalities of wealth and access to land, its political legacies in forging new categories of difference, in drawing borders that have become militarized and dangerous places, we can perceive too the enduring importance of the unfinished post-colonial struggles for what the Malaysian writer Han Su Yin described in the 1950s as food, shelter, social security, a living wage, social justice, education. Environmental justice is about restitution and reparations. Without them, we cannot talk about justice at all. But we need to think more broadly. Our notions of environmental justice should encompass the freedom to create a livable home wherever people seek it, whether that is the freedom to stay put and not have to move, or the freedom to seek sustenance elsewhere, near or far, within or across borders. To make a final leap, perhaps thinking of a crisis of habitability might lead us to imagine environmental justice beyond the human. For humans are not alone by any means in seeking shelter as precious places of attachment and familiarity are stretched to the brink of viability. Music